Hello, this is Siddharth Thamber from Chicago Arthritis. Knee pain is one of the most common, probably the most common musculoskeletal issue that humans suffer from. There's a lot of things that you as an individual can do to treat yourself and hopefully things that you can do to avoid having to go to actually see a physician. So today I want to discuss a few of those things. Uh, so that hopefully you don't actually need to go see the doctor for your knee pain. First and foremost, it's really important to understand for most musculoskeletal issues, but certainly knee pain, that there is a bit of a difference between acute injuries versus chronic knee pain. For most acute injuries, not all, but most of them, they tend to be soft tissue injuries in the setting of a specific activity. If you've had a soft tissue injury after a specific activity, one really common way to treat that up front is with very basic activity modification. And what that means is reducing the activity that has either caused the injury or is leading to pain. Pretty basic thing to do, but in a lot of people that can be enough to recover from that injury to get you back into your activity level. Now what's interesting is that uh, a really common approach to treating that kind of acute injury also includes anti-inflammatory medications and ice as well, an attempt to reduce acute inflammation, which can help with pain. I would recommend trying to actually avoid that. So it's important to understand the difference between acute and chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is your body's inefficient and poor way of trying to uh, deal with injured tissue. It's not very helpful for the body. Uh, acute inflammation, on the other hand, is your body's normal and appropriate way of trying to recover from an injury. If you have a swollen knee after an acute injury, generally speaking, that's because your body is trying to attempt to recover from that injury. So taking something like an over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medication like Advil, Aleve, Celebrex, or icing it down, while it may help with pain, the reality is that you're really countering what uh, your body's normal healing process. So if you're able to avoid that, I, th I think that actually makes sense. If you have any degree of instability, such as your knee is giving out on you, it's buckling, it's catching, I would strongly recommend getting checked out by um, uh, an appropriately trained musculoskeletal physician right off the bat. Uh, you may have a more significant injury than you realize, in addition, if you have instability, your knee is definitely much more prone to a worse injury if the knee is remaining unstable, uh, and certainly instability long-term leads to progressive arthritis as well. Now, on the other hand, if your issue is chronic, slightly different approach, slightly different issues to think about. So for me, when I think of chronic, I'm generally thinking of an issue that's going beyond six to eight weeks or so. Uh, for most acute injuries, that your body's gonna recover from, that four to six week mark is, is generally um, satisfactory. So more than six weeks starts to become chronic. Uh, definitely, without a doubt, if you have chronic knee pain and uh, there are things you can do on a biomechanical level that you can do all by yourself. So for example, the normal gait or running cycle includes a transition of weight from your hips to your knees. Uh, the nature of how we live in modern day society is that we sit for way too long and a lot of us have some degree of weakness in the hips. So something that uh, can be relatively easily done if you have chronic knee pain is strengthening your hips and that may be one way to actually help uh, treat that pain uh, on your own without having to see the doctor. That's a good first step for a lot of chronic knee pains. In addition, if you have any degree of um, lower back issues that could be causing a mild pinched nerve, leading to some hip pains, leading to some knee pains, um, strengthening your core muscles, treating the lower back may be helpful. In addition, if you have instability in the ankle, or if your ankle tends to over or under pronate, uh, or if you have any degree of leg length discrepancy between one side to the other, uh, sometimes orthotics can make a difference as well for your knee pain as well. So again, pretty good, um, easy, upfront thing that you can do on your own without having to go see a physician. Also important to understand that a lot of chronic knee pain issues involve inflammation as well. So I mentioned that I think it's better off avoiding anti-inflammatory medications in the setting of an acute injury. I think chronically, it's really essential that you don't wanna get um, uh, sort of used to using chronic pain medications in, in that regard. Uh, there are some potential side effects. 
On the other hand, I think if you use over-the-counter glucose and chondroitin, omega-3, turmeric supplementation, these are uh, low-risk um, uh, supplements that have the potential for some degree of anti-inflammatory effect, pain relief as well, and knee pain relief as well. So again, I think that's a better option rather than using chronic anti-inflammatory medications. If you have a sense of fatigue in the knee, uh, where with activity your knee starts to feel a little bit weak as well, you may have a component of instability. Definitely instability has a big component for chronic knee pain as well. Um, you can certainly try knee bracing, which may help. Uh, again, I still think that if you have any degree of instability, get, get checked out by a physician because I think uh, that probably is something that needs a little bit more active intervention than just uh, what you can do on your own. But again, knee bracing can be helpful for pain relief also. So if the above attempts at self-treatment are insufficient, you really should be treated or rather evaluated first and then possibly treated by an appropriately trained musculoskeletal physician. And that means someone who is really focused and dedicated to treating joint problems, in particular knee problems, and someone who has the perspective of how to use regenerative medicine techniques for these kinds of issues. Which is really a great point because the reality is that a lot of the things that I'm talking about, whether, you're, whether we're referring to soft tissue injuries, uh, inflammation or instability, these are things that can benefit from treatment with regenerative medicine treatments, including platelet-rich plasma and bone marrow-derived stem cells. However, before you even get to that point, hopefully you can actually avoid getting into the doctor's office just by doing some self-treatment, self-care, based on some of the things that, that I talked about. Thank you for your time. Leave me your thoughts. Have a good day and live well. Thank you.